Welcome back. Let's talk about the Paleogene period in uh, of the Cenozoic era. We might have to break this one up into a couple of videos. Okay, so this is kind of what we're looking like. Um, excuse me, mid uh, Paleogene. Still not quite uh, obviously what North America would look like today. Beginning of the Paleogene, not much going on. We do have some glaciation mid Paleogene that will eventually occur. Excuse me. Um, so the Paleogene is the first of three periods in the Cenozoic and it's divided up into three epochs, the Paleocene, Eocene, and Oligocene. Um, the Cretaceous Paleogene, KP extinction, that happened, you know, that separated the Mesozoic from the, the Cenozoic, the Cretaceous period from the Paleogene period, um, opened up numerous uh, ecological niches that were filled mostly by mammals with the dying out of all these organisms all these other ones can come to prominence birds also began to diversify and occupy new niches as well many familiar plants such as uh, pine trees cacti palms first appeared during the paleogene as well as plants uh, evolved grasses developed into expansive uh, grasslands for the first time um, by the end of the paleogene um, North America was home to such animals like mastodons, ground sloths, armadillos, camels, horses, saber-toothed cats, uh, giant wolves, giant beavers, giant bears. They were all giant. Again, might have looked a little something like this. So let's jump into the, the first epoch of the Paleogene, and that's the Paleocene. Um, most mammal fossils that we're finding from the very beginning of the Cenozoic we're, we're small little herbivores, kind of like, like these little things, you know, little, little squirrely looking things. Um, by mid Paleocene, the undulates, or ungulates, however you pronounce it, I usually pronounce it undulates, uh, which are hoofed animals. Uh, initially, they had five toes that later changed a little bit, but these uh, undulates became abundant. And so hoofed animals that were uh, that evolved during the Paleocene include things that look kind of like this, uh, kind of um, rhinoceros typeish, you know, ancestry loosely looking things. Um, also during the Paleocene, prosimian primates, mostly these little tree shoe, uh, tree uh, shrews and and tarsiers also increased in number. Uh, so these are kind of pro-simians uh, uh, mammals, uh, lemurs, lorises, eye eyes, what we have now. And these are not considered um, apes. Uh, that's really only over here. We have apes, we have monkeys, and then we have these things. But we do share an ancient common uh, ancestor with the, the prosimians. So these are the kind of the some of the first um, uh, tree dwelling like mammals similar to later monkeys and apes that uh, first come to prominence on Earth. Um, getting into the Eocene epoch, the middle part of the Paleogene period. Um, the vegetation was fairly modern, what we kind of similar to what we have now, so nothing too groundbreaking going on. Um, ancestors of present day mammals of um, Europe and North America kind of make their appearance as evolution continues. Eocene mammals include uh, ancestral rhinos, tapirs, camels, pigs, rodents, monkeys, whales, and the ancestral horse, as well as animals such as the brontotheres, which have become extinct. So here's some images. Here are uh, some ancestral whales. Um, you can almost see, you know, how they, they almost look like they have hands in there. And if we can look at the um, evolutionary process of whales, this is kind of how we got there from from the uh, during the Eocene. All right, from the, so whales are a mammal. Mammals evolved on land. And then the whales eventually made their way to the ocean. So, yeah, interesting. The horse evolves from the early little dawn horse till kind of modern day what we have. Um, so just some, some images. Kind of looks more like a D 
deer dog thing. Um, starting as it continues to evolve, it starts to take the form until we get to the, the modern modern horse. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And then again, those Bronto uh, theories mammals, uh, kind of related to horses, related to rhinoceros, evolve to great size as most things were in, um, in or I should say, shouldn't say most, as a lot of things were. There was a lot more larger mammals. Um, during the paleogene than they are now if you think of you know large mammals you have things like you know elephants nowadays elephants hippos rhinos giraffes uh, buffalo horses you know the, these large things but there was many more large creatures during the paleogene before they died out but anyway bronto theories is is this thing and again like i said we have some excellent fossils of, of many Cenozoic organisms just because it's just so recent. So the stuff is still kind of there and it's plentiful. So it kind of looks like a cross between like a buffalo and a rhino, but it's got like two kind of horns coming out. So yeah, just interesting, interesting looking stuff. Um, can, continuing on in, to the Oligocene epoch, um, you get the, the almost... The complete but so we have this virtual disappearance of some of those archaic mammals of the of the paleocene which marks the oligocene evolution in europe and north america uh, so things are becoming you know they're evolving to what we kind of know know now they seem a little more similar to things now than they did to things during the beginning of the cenozoic um things like terrestrial and aquatic rhinosaur uh <laughs> rhinosaurs rhinoceroses evolved um, carnivorous mammals, uh, for instance, the ancestral dogs and cats make their first appearance, along with beavers, mice, rabbits, and squirrels. Dogs and cats actually share a common ancestor. So cats, um, dogs, uh, as well as bears are in this canine um, uh, class of, of, of animals. And then felines, cats, big cats, small cats, house cats. But they do have a, a common ancestor, and that common ancestor kind of looks something like this, kind of like a weasel cat dog type thing. So yeah, so these things start to evolve, the, the ancestral dogs and cats. Looking at the evolutionary tree of dogs and cats, where that organism would be located, it'd probably be somewhere, somewhere in here before it kind of splits off into these two families, of which um, canines... Uh, dogs and bears and seals and walruses and, and raccoons and skunks are kind of one one family and then we have uh, the more feline based uh, organisms in the other but again they have that common ancestor um camels in telodonts also kind of evolved these are kind of ancestors of modern pig uh, modern pigs and other hoofed animals um, and then a more evolved form of horse so here is one of those intelodonts, uh, this organism, really this weird looking thing. I, and it's shown next to a grizzly bear for, uh, for reference. It's just huge. I mean, this, this pig, warthog, pig horse thing. I mean, it's nasty. Here's another image. I mean, definitely wouldn't want to come across one of these things. That does not look enjoyable. But in any case, birds begin to diversify in the paleogene as well. First families of owls, hawks, ducks, penguins, vultures evolved during the paleogene period. Uh, also a marked increase in songbirds, those are the ones that whistle nice. Um, the basic skeletal structure of birds has not changed significantly since the Cenozoic because the adaptation to fly once put into place is kind of what you need to stay flying. Uh, birds adapted to numerous habitats all across the, the world. And here is a look at some of the uh, early types of birds that we would see. Again, very, very weird kind of looking initially. Um, some large ground birds, some flying birds, etc. Uh, one of the most uh, remarkable uh, adaptations of birds was uh, the development of large kind of flightless predator birds. Uh, the now extinct uh, Diatrema, nearly seven feet tall bird, huge head, huge beak, short legs, big claws, 
little vestigial wings, meaning they don't really work as flying. So you can see how big this thing is compared to a human. Again, great fossils. Can you imagine? This kind of reminds me of a Kevin from Up for some reason, if you can kind of remember that. Big giant pigs, these things roaming around. It would be, it's, a, it's just a different, a different world in the Paleogene. And again, with those grasses, um, as part of the um, continuing evolution of flowering plants, uh, grasses develop. Um, they grasses grow not from the ends, but more from the roots, uh, which actually helps to protect them from damage caused by uh, wildfires or grazing. So if you have grass and things eat the grass, that's fine because the roots are still there and that's where it grows from. It grows from the roots, not kind of from the from the ends. Um, grasslands developed in areas where there was wildfire, usually caused by lightning, uh, but animals also rapidly evolved to take advantage of this new habitat as well as new food source. The mammals that began grazing on grasses were uh, two-toed hoofed animals like antelopes, deer, cattle, sheep, and one-toed uh, mammals like rhinoceros uh, and horses. And those began to diversify with new habitat and new home. So again, here's another look at a paleogene life. It's one of those big pig-looking weird things. Um, but in these grasslands, again, these things can develop and thrive. Okay, so that's the Paleogene. We're starting to diversify mammals, some new weird mammals coming up, birds, grass, all that kind of fun stuff. Again, um, most plants are now in place, including now grasses, and so there's really not much evolution of plants beyond that because we started to get the cacti and the, and the, the pines and the palms and those sorts of things. So let's go ahead and pause here. Uh, I guess we didn't need to break it up into two videos. One was fine. And when we come back, we'll talk about the Neogene period of the... Pa uh, yeah, the Neogene period of the Cenozoic era. Sorry, brain fart. See you back here in a second.